All right, so where we left off last time was here. And right now we've got all of our media queries working, so these are all cascading properly. Uh, and there were just a few little things left to do. Um, and one of the things that, we no that I noticed after the last demo is that this header is still not quite right, uh, or not the header, but the H1. It's really close up to the top. So we can take a real quick second to fix that. And let's go ahead and go all the way up to the top and let's find our header one, uh, header H1. And let's go ahead and add a line height to that. Right now the line height isn't set. Let's try about mm, two M's, okay, or two M. And let's hit refresh. And you can see now that's better. It's more centered and it's working. It's working out for us a lot better. Now, one of the things also that we didn't really take care of is if we scale this really, really small, like somewhere in here, you see that the header, uh, it, the size, the scale of it is still pretty big. So for the H1, uh, if we wanted to create something in a media query down here, where <clears throat> on the smallest smallest one, we could say header h1, and then we could change the actual size of the font. And if we look up here to see what it was, we have it at, set at 3m. Uh, and we can mess with the font weight if it's necessary. But we're going to copy some stuff here, so we don't have to type everything. We'll just copy this and scroll back down. And here's our media query. And what I'm looking for, we don't need the font family because we're not changing it. We might change the font weight, possibly, but we are definitely going to change the font size. So let's see what happens if we do it like at 2.25 M. And for the line height, let's see what happens if we leave it at 2 M. Let's see what happens if we leave it at 600. Let's save that and let's go ahead and refresh this and you can see that the size is a little bit smaller and it's a it potentially a little bit better um, now if I wanted to make that a little bit bigger we might want to go ahead and bump it up to 2.5 and then for the line height let's see what happens if we make it at 2.5 okay so let's test it in Internet Explorer I haven't really been testing it so far in there, so let's look at it. And you see it jumps down to a smaller size that I think is a little bit more manageable, so it's not uh, bumping as, as quickly. And that's a pretty small size, and even like a lot of flip phones would probably be able to handle that. And we can also just check it really quickly in Chrome. Hit refresh, and that looks a lot better. And then it takes quite a bit of narrowing down to make that bump. Okay, so I think we're going to be good. Now, one of the things that we haven't done that we need to do is in the HTML file. So up at the top, underneath the title, I'm going to go ahead and drop a line down. And I'm going to paste something in so you don't have to watch me type the whole thing. And I'm going to explain what all of this means. So you're going to put a tag in that's uh, called a meta tag. And one of the attributes is going to be name, and the value for that attribute is viewport. And <clears throat> what this is doing is it's going to target the viewport for this meta information. And where it says content, all right, content is another attribute. And then the value for content is going to be this long value. And I'll scroll off the page in a second. So you're going to make it be width equals device dash width. Okay, so and then separated by a comma, the next one is going to be initial dash scale equals 1.0. And then another separated comma is maximum dash scale equals 1.0. <clears throat> and then we're going to have another final one that says user dash scalable equals no. Now, what does that all mean? It's pretty self-evident. So for the content that's going to define the viewport, we're going to basically say that the width is going to equal the device width. Okay, so if it's a phone or if it's a tablet, it's automatically going to expand to 
uh, the device width. And then it's going to say initial scale. So what do you want the initial scale to be? We're going to say it's going to be 1.0. And then we're going to say maximum scale is 1.0. So basically what that prevents is someone uh, from zooming. Okay, and then next we're going to say that the user cannot scale. And essentially on a phone or a tablet, what it's going to do is make it so that they can't pinch and zoom, and but that it's also going to op automatically optimize at 100% of the screen dimension. And because we're doing this responsively with percentages and M's and so forth, it will be readable. Okay, and what this is going to do is it prevents also uh, the phones and tablets from showing the full website at that desktop view where it's got three columns and everything is really tiny. What this is going to do is it forces it to use the device width so that it will in fact do this kind of cascading. Well it won't actually cascade, that's the, that's the whole point, is that whenever something is in landscape it'll do this uh, on a tablet and then if you turn it to portrait it'll most likely go to here and then on a phone it's going to most likely, for portrait and landscape on most phones, going to be in a single column. And that's because of what we're doing right here in conjunction with the CSS that we've already written. So this is really, really important. And a lot of times if you do testing with emulators, which I'm going to get to in a moment, this part isn't self-evident. It's not until you actually go to your smartphone or to your tablet and you truly go online, which means you have to upload it to a place online. You have to go online and then test it. That's when the true test is, when you actually are testing it on the device. Most emulators work pretty well, but there are some things that they're not great at, and this is one of them. Okay, so I'm going to save this, and you're not going to notice a difference when I refresh it here. You're not really going to notice a difference um, because it's still doing what it's supposed to do, but uh, you would definitely notice it on your phone, for instance. Okay, so you can't forget to do that. Now, something else that I wanted to show you is one of the things that we didn't really deal with is we've got these breakpoints and then they just sort of snap in place. And it's a little bit jarring for some users to see things just sort of snap and move and change when you don't see the actual easing effect. And so it used to be that you had to use JavaScript to do easing effects, but now with CSS3, uh, you can, for most uh, browsers, you're going to be able to have this work, and where it doesn't work, it's not going to matter because it'll just snap. Um, we're going to go up to the very top of our style sheet, and we're going to, uh, right up above the body, we're going to paste, oh, I'm going to paste some code in, you're going to type it. And basically, let me just ex explain what this is doing. This asterisk is a wild card, and what that means is it means everything. If you ever see an asterisk in programming, uh, it almost always is going to mean ev everything. Okay, so basically, this is going to apply to every single thing on the page. Now, the style that's uh, the rule that's uh, going to be in here, we're going to have to do some vendor specific styles. And the reason for that is WebKit, which is primarily, it's going to be Apple, although some other things use WebKit, but this is primarily for Apple. WebKit does it differently than Mozilla. Mozilla would be like Firefox and some other engines. And then O is for Opera. And then this is going to be the catch-all that would work, say, in Internet Explorer later versions. So what we're doing is we're basically saying, WebKit transition, and the property, the basic property, is called transition. And so this prefix is just the vendor specific prefix. Okay, so what we're going to say is transition, and then the values are going to be all, which means you're going to transition everything that's changing in the page. So if something is cascading because it's moving, then it's going to do the easing effect. Okay, so you're going to ease all for the duration of one second. Okay, so let's watch and see what this does. All right, go back over here, we're gonna hit refresh. And now as I move this, you see that, that there's an easing effect that's taking place. Okay, so it's a little bit more gradual and this is kind of a nice touch. 
that you can sort of spice use to spice up your page without a lot of effort. And let's look at in Chrome, make sure it's working, hit refresh. So we've got our phone view, and then we go here, and then we go to the larger view, let's scoot it over. Okay, and if that easing effect is not fast enough, you want to see making it a little bit faster, you might want to try like 0.5. Let's try it on all of these. Save it and see how that works for you. Okay, and that's so fast. That's pretty quick, and that might be a better one for you uh, than the other one. If it, if it takes too long to do it, then it might be a little jumpy uh, because it, it has to do it like in steps. But if you do it um, too fast, then it's you're not really going to see the easing transition. And so there might be some happy medium in here somewhere, like maybe 0.6 or something like that. Okay, so let's say refresh that and let's try this again and that might be a better one somewhere around 0.6 then we can try it in Chrome real quick refresh the page that's a little bit better okay so that's a nice easing effect and you can go back and uh, rewind and pause this if you need to look at the code okay uh, and here it is okay now what I did was I just uploaded my work to the web and so I'm going to go ahead and look at it on the web. So we can take a look at it in, uh, let's go to Chrome, I guess. And I this is on my computer so you can see it says file. And if I go here to this one, this is where I put mine on the web. So it's uh, on my server and it's under responsive design. So it's sandbox.leecotner.com slash lessons slash responsive underscore design. Okay, so you can see here, I'm going to refresh it, make sure it looks the same. And you can see this is what it's doing up on the, on the server. Now, what I want to show you is this tool called Responsinator. So if you go to www.responsinator.com, and you can see how it's spelled here, um, what you can do is you can, in this uh, field right here, you can put the URL address of a website. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it here. And then if I click on go, what it's going to do, it's, it's going to show me on some different standard devices, it's going to show me what my website would look like. And this is kind of a cool thing. Let me actually make this full screen so that you could actually scroll it and you can see how it's going to behave on different types of devices. This is for iPhone 3 and 4. And then this is a landscape view. So you can see that on iPhone 3 and 4, this is the way it's going to look. Okay, and then you can come over here. And then this is a <clears throat> iPhone 5 portrait. And then on an iPhone 5 landscape, it's also going to give me this first block. But then remember I was telling you on some of the newer phones, it's going to still break out into two columns in landscape view. iPhone 5 is a lot bigger than the iPhone 4 and so in landscape view it's actually going to give us two columns all right sort of like a tablet would in, in uh, its landscape view so you see iPhone 5 in vertical or uh, portrait view and then in landscape you see we get two columns and then it shows like an old Android all right still working it shows that it's still working on an Android this is an old Android and landscape still seems to be working. And then we've got the Android Nexus 4 and so forth. Okay, These are not by any means all of the devices that are available, but it gives you some idea. And then here is, a, I think it's a, an iPad, and this is a portrait view. So we've got two columns here. If you look at landscape view for an iPad, you actually get all three columns, and but that was what we predicted. And then this is a Kindle, okay, portrait view, and so forth. So you can test all of these things, which is really great. Okay, I'm going to end this demo here, but you need to watch the next demo because I'm going to talk about navigation and how you can extend this into the pages for your uh, website for Assignment 6.